In the book of Luke, in our study of the book of Luke, we've now come to an entirely different section. We're going to move beyond the birth of Jesus to the childhood of Jesus. Uh, as we go through the book of Luke, we will see several things about the life of Jesus that often get ignored in biblical teaching or in the life of the church. Most of the time we hear about his birth, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. But there's a lot more in between those events that many of us don't get to deal with and we don't know a lot about. Every event in the life of Jesus is important because Jesus sought to do everything that the Old Testament law said that a person or a Jew ought to do. In other words, he wanted to meet every obligation that was put on everybody else so that he could set an example. He went through every ceremony that a Jew was supposed to go through. That's why he was baptized, as an example for us. Today, we come to an instance in the life of Jesus as a little boy when Jesus' mom and dad bring him to the temple in order to carry out some obligations and ceremonies that needed to be observed. Every Hebrew baby boy needed to be circumcised on the eighth day of his life. In other words, eight days after a little baby boy was born, he was to be circumcised. That was to show that he was a member of the Jewish family or the nation of Israel. And on that day, he was legally given his name. So on the eighth day of his life, Jesus now comes to be circumcised or is brought by his parents to be circumcised and he's given the name Jesus. After this, as a baby, he is taken to the temple and there his parents would give a sacrifice or an offering to the Lord to buy their son back. This is something that every Hebrew parent would do. They would give five shekels. In our economy, that's less than a penny about a penny. They would give five shekels to the priest to buy their child back. It might be interesting just to learn a little bit about their culture to know that if the child was a boy, they would have to wait 40 days before they could take him to the temple because a little boy was not considered to be clean until 40 days after his birth. If it was a girl, they had to wait 80 days so after the 40 days, Jesus has now already been circumcised and given his name. They are now to bring him to the temple, and they give the shekels to buy him back. Or they could have given two pigeons if they didn't have enough money to buy a lamb. There's something very unique that happens on this occasion when Jesus' parents bring little baby Jesus to the temple and present him to the Lord and to pay their offering and to buy him back. I want to share the scripture with you. It's in Luke 2, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 35. In the New International Version, here's what it says. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. That's just what we've been talking about. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. They were obedient. Verse 22. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, in other words, they'd waited that 40 days I just told you about, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, this is an Old Testament quotation, Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Again, he's following the, the, the law, the rules of the Old Testament. Verse 25. Here's where the story gets interesting. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. We'll see later, he was waiting for the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. 
In other words, God had told him personally he wouldn't die before he saw the Messiah. Verse 27. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents, Joseph and Mary, brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. So the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is a tremendous story that we get in the book of Luke. So when Mary and Joseph come to the temple, they have this encounter with an older man named Simeon. Simeon, as I mentioned, as scripture just said, had been given a personal promise by God. God had told Simeon that he would not die before he saw the Messiah come to Israel. Now it's important to understand that everybody in the nation of Israel was looking for a Messiah. It had been the dream and prayer of every Hebrew that the Messiah would come and deliver the people of Israel. Simeon, however, had been told by God directly, I don't know how, but he had been told that the Messiah would come before he died. The problem is he's now getting very old and he's waiting expectantly for the Messiah to come before he dies. So one day while he was praying, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord moved on his heart and said, you need to get down to that temple. It's time. Today's the day you're going to see that Messiah. So he just followed God's impulse in his heart, and he went down there, and of course, he saw Jesus. When I read this story, I can only imagine what would have happened if he had disregarded or not paid attention to the impulse of God in his heart. Oftentimes, you and I get impulses from the Lord. Sometimes we let them go, and sometimes we pay attention to them. I'm sure there are some Sunday mornings when God nudges you in bed and says it's time to get up and go to church, and you just roll over. There's no telling what you might miss that day. Simeon had one chance at seeing the Messiah before he died, and if he had not been sensitive to the spirits moving in his heart, he would have missed it. In the next few studies, we're going to look at the baby and we're going to look at Simeon and we're going to look at Joseph and Mary and we're going to learn some things out of this story. It's going to be an exciting study. I want to talk about how the old meets the new and what we can learn about as we go through this study. Check us out in our next study on Luke 2, 21 through 35.